Hi everyone, today we have a new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about something special because this is a release which I was not expecting from this brand. It's the HMS Sheffield from 4 Art in 1 350 scale, so it's a ship kit or to be precise the missile destroyer kit on a popular scale, so it's quite an interesting release and this is the kit number 3001 and this is something what is coming here on this table in the final shape so you'll get exactly the same stuff as what you will see in this video review and I think it's interesting because it's uh, something what is as I said unusual for this brand and also offering uh, interesting alternative to all those popular manufacturers and something new in terms of the subject and the molding quality so as you can notice the box size here is typical here you can see comparison with my hand and uh, the box art is quite nice so I really hope that there is uh, some at least the postcard with the same image so here on the side you will find also the image of the one marking option which is included here we also have some safety devices and on the opposite side you can see the 3D images of the assembled model as well as the uh, pictures of the PE which is included here. I can see there are a lot of parts so it will be quite a fun to work with this. And the assembled model will be 359 millimeters long so it's quite a large uh, thing to assemble. And here you can see what is hidden inside, so all of the parts are actually packed into the separate plastic bags, so it's uh, quite good packaging, but it will require some time from me to open all of this stuff, so I think we will be gradually opening them one by one, and I will start with the one which was on the top. And here we have the sprue N, so this one is dedicated to... Uh, oh, okay. It's quite interesting why I'm surprised because here we have the helicopters which should be placed on this model. And this is something of the bonus, I would say, which I'm not usually expecting in the ship kits. So here you can see two helicopters. And we also have here some boats included as well. And the molding quality is really good. So if I zoom in even closer, you can see that details are quite impressive, for, especially for this size. Here is comparison with my fingertips. The same can be said about these boats. And if I flip over the sprue, as you can see, the helicopters, uh, they should be assembled out of two halves. That's why we get only one helicopter basically but it's still quite impressive inclusion here and again I will repeat myself that this is something what I was not expecting to be here but it's really cool that they decided to add it as the standard bonus and you can basically work on getting a quite convincing paintwork on this aircraft and I wonder if there will be the decals for this aircraft um, it would be I would say logical to expect them included uh, to be included but maybe uh, there will be copied some other way so next i'm opening one more plastic bag we have the sprue o and this one is full of the uh, small thin parts uh, so here we have the various masts and some other parts which will be added on the deck and as you can see the attachment points are quite thin so i don't think you will have any issues but i like the molding quality because it's basically the same uh, quality as what we saw in uh, armored vehicles from the same brand so as you can see it all parts are quite crisply molded we do not have any flash or any other molding damage and the only thing I would be worried is uh, actually handling these thin parts because it might be a bit tricky for some maneuvers, especially the older ones. And here you can see also the parts from the opposite side. So uh, from my point of view, it looks rather impressive. The only question is uh, to, again, to install them properly and also to paint them in the right way. But I think for... Uh, experienced modellers who have already some experience with the ship kits then it should be completely fine for them i'm trying here to tear apart another plastic bag probably you can hear this and this one is already dedicated for some uh, armament which is installed on this ship i can see also the radar domes so let's move this sprue aside and this is the sprue l here it is 
And as you can see, we have a lot of One Piece elements. Here you can see those domes which I was talking about. And maybe it's worth zooming in and showing all of those elements a bit closer. So again, I like the uh, pre-molded features here. I think for this scale they are quite important because you cannot do all of the things uh, separately and you uh, as a manufacturer you have to resort to some parts being pre-molded in the main elements let's say or main sections so that's how it is resolved here and uh, overall i think it uh, has really good looks and i can see that there are also some guiding elements present so it should be easy to install them but uh, well again i remind you that it might be worth thinking through how to paint these parts because uh, some of them should be uh, masked or maybe painted in a different way so that's why it will take a bit more effort and now i resorted to cutting through the plastic bag because i think it will be quicker and the next sprue i will actually show is the sprue m and here you will see again some of the lifeboats and what is interesting is that this one is assembled out of two house but the one which is on the top here is a single piece molded part so it's a variety let's say in terms of the design and you have to pay attention on how those parts will be assembled obviously when we will be joining the two halves together it's important to get the smooth connection because these uh, bolts are usually smooth as one can guess and again it's a good opportunity to play with some weathering techniques and i think it's worth zooming in and showing these parts a bit closer because it's again a really nice bonus some manufacturers just skip on it or maybe make them pre-molded but here as you can see we have nicely structured elements and uh, it might be a really good addition especially in one 350 scale because uh, it's a big model and you will see it when we will be checking the hull parts because they are also molded as single piece elements it will be a small spoiler for you but nevertheless uh, the next sprue is dedicated to the armament turrets and also various masts as far as you can see it's the sprue a and here you can see all the parts so again a lot of thin parts these are even the machine gun barrels or the cannon barrels so that's why you have to be careful with them i do not see the metal barrels to be included but to be honest the plastic barrels from 4Art or 4Hobby, they are usually really nice, so I, it's not something what I will worry with this brand. And I think this kit is not an exclusion from this rule. And next, we continue with the plastic sprue K. So this one already carries the parts for the superstructure on the ship. We also have some uh, pipings here and I can see that everything looks fine. We have some pre-molded features on the panels. And if I flip over the sprue here, we have a lot of guiding pins. And I like how the guiding pins are looking here because they actually give you a really good position and alignment of this part. So you don't have to worry about any weird appearance when you try to combine them together and I think it's very important here because the model itself is very tiny and all of such mishaps they will be visible and that's why it's good when manufacturer thinks through and gives you the proper connection system or connection design I would say. Next we continue with the sprue J again some superstructure panels so as one can guess the superstructures we will be assembled out of separate panels combined together. We also have some guiding tabs. And here you can check also that we have some features from the opposite side as well. I guess they will be visible. Maybe this is the uh, some transport bay or something of this sense. So if you know what it is, feel free to write in the comment section. Because I'm not such a huge specialist in this type of the uh, ship. So I would be happy to learn more. But next is another... Uh, sprue field with the uh, small parts and when I'm saying small they are really tiny here you can see comparison with my fingertip so this is something what should be handled or must be handled with the uh, thin parts uh, with the uh, really thin tweezers because otherwise you will be having a fun time trying to find this part here and there especially it will if it will fall down on some carpet and next sprue is even more interesting 
and I will show in a second why I think we need to zoom in for this. Because whole, whole superstructure here, as you can see, it is molded as a clear part. And that's done in order to avoid the separate clear inserts. So you just mask them here and you have a really uh, ready to be installed uh, superstructure. So it's quite a smart design. Maybe the masking will be a bit tricky and I'm not sure if they're included here, but who knows. Uh, next, I can see that we have few minor bonuses here which were not mentioned on the box. So, first of all, we have actually one metal barrel here. As you can see, it looks really nice. And this is something what I would recommend to install anyway. Um, no matter what are your skills, just try to install it because it will be worth it. And the next thing, I'm not sure where it will be installed, I guess, these are some ratings. As you can see, these are 3D printed parts. Note how they are protected, so they are very tender and they have a special protection frame from both sides obviously you have to cut it off and then you will be able to use it but we will learn more when we will be checking the assembly manual because i guess there they will show how to install this part and what is actually copied with it next i'm opening another plastic bag here i have another superstructure so this one again is molded as a single piece part and here where it gets very impressive I would say so maybe I will have to zoom out a bit and uh, why I'm saying impressive because we saw such stuff in the armor kits but in armor kits it was usually really small sub assemblies here as you can see it's a very large part and we have a lot of pre-molded features here so it's not like some plain brick which you should install you actually get a lot of stuff on the part and you don't have to add it separately so it's a good design which will speed up the assembly process and it also makes it easier to get a bit more convincing appearance on your build and one more useful thing is this so this is the black stand obviously as you can see we even have the cutout for the name i'm not sure if it is supplied as the p part or as a decal but still we get something to display on i would recommend to paint over this stand so that the black plastic is not visible and you can try to replicate maybe the metal finish or something of this sense and it will be looking a bit more sophisticated next i'm opening one more plastic bag so here we have two more superstructures these are not as impressive as the previous one but as you can see again we have a lot of stuff uh, going on here and I think it really shows the amount of the uh, work in design which was, um, I would say, taken here. And as you can see, it's really good. And next, we start with the large parts. So first of all, the lower hull section. And just to show you the size here, I will have to zoom out and here is comparison with my hand. So it's very large. As I said, it's almost uh, 36 centimeters. We also have the raised edges, which will help you with alignment. And inside we also have these ribs, which are used for the strength in the structure, because otherwise it will be very wobbly. And next I'm opening also another plastic bag. As you can guess, the hull assembly does not end with this section, which you are looking at right now because we also have the deck and the deck is supplied as a single piece part we also have some things promoted here in the nose area but overall you have to install all of the superstructures and here from the opposite side we only have the name of this part it's a part d so quite interesting by the way on the rear section you can also see i guess that's the transport bay which we saw before so we have the let's say roof details pre-molded this is also a nice and neat touch in this scale and it means that uh, possibly it will be open maybe that's where the helicopter will be based we'll see next we have one more plastic part and that's actually the last one this is the middle section of the main hull so again as you can see it's quite large and here in the tail area or in the end bay area we have also some openings which is also quite cool because you don't have to do anything they are pre-molded in the part and they look really decent and inside of course we have this uh, strengthening elements so it's not flexible and that's also quite a smart application of such thing in the large parts 
Next I'm opening the Ziploc bag and here as you can guess we have the unpainted PE parts the ones which were shown on the box so here you can see two of those PE frets and maybe I'll zoom in and close the lenses so these are all of the ratings we will have to install here we have more of the parts for the superstructures and for the deck and again here you can see also comparison with my fingertips so these are very tiny parts even considering relatively large scale so that's why it will take some time I know that not many modellers are actually fond of such thing but I think it's uh, uh, something what is worth spending your time with because the final result uh, I mean it's noticeable once you use such upgrade and this is something what is not possible to replicate with the normal plastic parts next I'm opening another ziploc bag well it's basically the same one but I am taking another thing which was uh, stored here it's the decal sheet and as you can see here we have all of the necessary symbols i'm not sure if those decals will be actually used for the helicopter but we have some uh, small symbols so maybe some of them will go inside and there is no mention where they are printed in i mean the decals but the printing quality is really good i have some experience with decals from 4art and it was quite fine thing to work with and to apply on the model next we continue with assembly manual so here i'm closing the lenses a bit but this is the color printed brochure we have again this picture as on the box art no history note unfortunately but so uh, on the next page you will see the parts map and then we continue with assembly process so first you start with the main hull and as you can see uh, straight away there will be some parts going inside this main hull because they will be installed in the rear section as you can see here next we continue also with the engine fins and here we continue with the deck installation and also you can see uh, that we actually install the hull on the stand you have to drill some holes so that you can install the supports and the name of the ship is actually copied with the decal which we saw just a few seconds ago next we continue with the superstructures installation so here everything is pretty simple because these are large parts as you remember for the p parts as far as you can see you have to do some bending in some cases so for this size obviously it's a good idea to get some PE bender especially for the circular finishes because again the part is straight you have to make a circle and the same applies to these railings on the deck because it might be a bit tricky to get the right angle next we continue with antennas also you install various parts on the superstructures here we continue with uh, more railings being installed uh, here and there we also have the bolts being installed here and i wonder when the helicopter will be installed so here we install the transport bay or assemble the transport bay from what i can see or it's the no it's actually the superstructure steel which is assembled and installed on the top as you can see here we have again the radar dome and then we continue with various bolts being installed there and then all of this sub-assembly goes onto the deck but it's quite interesting design because you basically build it separately and you can paint it separately as well here we continue also with the turret installation and also some rockets or missiles if you prefer then we continue with the rear crane and here again some railings and the helicopter so yes helicopter is included you can even uh, depict it in the transport position or in the deploy position ready to fly uh, then we continue with more railings being installed so all of those blue colored elements as you can already guessed uh, it's the PE parts a lot of PE going here and there so plenty of stuff to work on and here you can see one and only marking option which is quite colorful in my opinion and here we have ah so it's two marking options or one because i'm not sure i can see the differences but this one is marked separately because yeah you, we do not have the british flag on the top so that's one of the differences we also have the paint chart here and here you can see again the image but again i would say that it would be cool to get the poster like this but overall this kit looks like an impressive release from 4art and it should be already available so you can get it in any good model shop and of course i will be happy to hear your opinion so do not forget to write it here in the comment section below and i will see in the next video review as usual thank you for joining me today and bye